Good morning and a warm welcome to our service on this, the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple. It's the day when we mark the completion of 40 days since the birth of Jesus, when Mary and Joseph took the child to the temple in Jerusalem. It was a day of purification for Mary and presenting the child to God. Incredible things were spoken over and about Jesus, not least that he would be a light for revelation to the Gentiles. And that's why today is also called Candlemas, and often a candlelit procession forms part of the service. We, we obviously can't do that today. However, hopefully you've got a candle ready, or if not, grab one now, so that you can light it later in the service when we come to the Candlemas prayer and ask God to fill us afresh with his light today. As usual, this service contains hymns and responses. Please join in as we worship together. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain, and heals our wounds. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Dear friends, Forty days ago, we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified. As we now come to him for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognised him as their Lord. As we today sing of his glory. In this service, we celebrate, celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. We sing our first hymn. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and, praising God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said before him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow to the age of eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee 
to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, Ali Middleton and I'm one of the associate vicars here at uh, the Minster and St Paul's, Marsborough. Well, today we are thinking about the presentation of Christ and about waiting and watching. But first, let me pray. Lord, open our ears and our hearts that we may receive the message that you would want us to hear. Amen. They shuffle out of the darkness. She is a little older than him, but their eyes are equally wide. They look around, expecting the bustling place to have come to an astonished halt. But no, the business of religion goes on. The priests continue their work. The smell of the animals continues to fill the air, along with the sound of money and of bantering and the footsteps of so many people coming to see God. And yet, they have all missed him. They are all looking the wrong way, all except this old, lowly couple who are moving ever closer. Joseph sighs, but his heart quickens a little, as it had done when those unruly shepherds invaded their space not long after the birth. He's starting to expect the unexpected, the old man nods and confirms what he could not have known without some divine help. He taps his left cheek just below the eye. This is what I've been waiting to see. Salvation, salvation, the arrival of God amongst his people. His work has begun. This baby will be the making and saving of so many. A light for the whole world. His face falls a little as well as a stumbling block for so many others. The coming of God will not be an easy thing for you. This child will be opposed as well as embraced, persecuted as well as celebrated. Joseph frowns. Mary nods quietly. Meanwhile, the other older woman is already beckoning towards others, smiling, whispering, passing on the message to anyone who happened to look their way. Mary and Joseph offer their required sacrifice, two pigeons for a poor family, and then making their way to the exit. And all the while, the business of religion goes on, the noise, the bustle, the energy. And amongst it all, the old couple slip quietly from person to person, telling of the baby and the arrival of the humble God. A retelling of the story, this is by David Hopwood. You know, sometimes it's helpful to dwell into the narrative of scripture, to allow our imaginations to fill in maybe some of the gaps that we don't read in the Bible. Well, I want to start by giving you a little bit of background. Jewish law said that the babies had to be presented at the temple 40 days after they were born with an offering. And as Mary and Joseph were of humble means, all they could afford was two pigeons instead of a lamb. These offerings had to be pure, without blemish. This sacrificial offering of Christ, who Peter describes in his letter, that he, Christ, was the lamb without blemish and without spot. And in a way, this presentation to the um, temple sort of foreshadows that. The law requires each firstborn son of a Jewish family that belonged, to the, that belonged to the Lord, that they were offered as a memorial for the deliverance of the children of Israel. If you remember back in Exodus, with the first Passover, when all the Israels, 
lights had to daub their doorposts with the blood of the first lamb so that death would pass over their houses. And this also is a foreshadow of the blood of Christ, which has power to save the whole world. So in this background of redemption and sacrifice, echoes forward into the passage that we are looking at today. Two elderly Israelites who were consoled by seeing Jesus. Simeon, a just and devout man who had a close walk with God. I wonder how someone would describe our own walks with God. Are we close, nearby, or maybe far away? You know, the name Simeon means God hears. Simeon was a man of patient, strong faith, who trusted in God because God is trustworthy. This story shows an opening of eyes to who the Messiah was, not a powerful, violent, political overlord, but comes in the form of a baby. Baby, God showing up in the ordinary, a baby in the arms of his parents. Although in some ways, they sh we shouldn't have been surprised because as our Old Testament passage shows in Malachi 3 verse 1, See, I'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before me and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. To his temple. So, let's look at the gift of waiting. We're told that Simeon was waiting for the coming of the consolation of Israel. May I live to see the Messiah was his hope. I wonder this morning what we are waiting for. The end of lockdown, a vaccination, a time when we can see people face to face and give them that hug that we so long to do. For a time when we can gather in church and also have coffee together. Or are you waiting for answered prayer? It may feel to you that God is silent at the moment, maybe distant. He isn't, but it may feel like it. Simeon's example teaches us to hang on in there, to listen to God, and also to know that God hears us. He hears our prayer. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness to be. He is patient with us. Waiting and watching. Simeon and Anna are waiting and watching for the Messiah. Are we watching? Watching for that glimpse of God. For the evidence of him at work. To catch him at work. Are we so alert? Because we need to be. Because God, I've experienced, turns up in the most surprising ways and places. Like that traumatised reading that I read earlier. God turns up when we're busy doing other things. God in the ordinary. So Simeon was close to God and the Holy Spirit revealed to him who the Messiah was. In contrast, the priest who didn't recognise who Jesus was. Possibly because he was caught up in the routine of receiving children from families. Something that he probably did every day. Possibly he'd become a little bit jaded. And possibly because Mary and Joseph were obviously poor. It's a real warning to all of us who are feeling jaded at the moment as Christians. Maybe we've got stuck into a routine, not expecting God to turn up. Or maybe we're guilty of putting God in our own shaped box. Believing that he only works in ways that are comfortable for us. Predicted ways, controlled ways, expected ways. It reminds me a bit of a line in um, an insurance document for, for churches, which says that we are to insure against acts of God. Hopefully we want acts of God to happen in our services. But I wonder whether we're prepared for it, whether we're open to be interrupted by God or whether we allow the routine of our services and our worship to constrain us. Simeon declared, 
For the mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Simeon is foretelling what Jesus says about himself, that he is light that physically breaks into darkness for all people, no matter who you are. Let me say that again. He is the light that physically breaks into the darkness for all people, no matter who you are, because we all are his special treasure. You might feel at the moment that you're walking in darkness, that things are crowding in around you. I want to encourage you to hang on to Jesus, for he is the only light that's going to get you through. You may not feel very special at the moment, and if that's you, this is a message to say that you are God's special treasure. And let us not forget about Anna. She confirms and expands on what Simeon has already said about Jesus. See, Anna was a regular at the temple. but It felt like she lived there. She worshipped night and day, we're told. I wonder, do we start and end our day in worship and prayer? Even if we can't be together in church, there are lots of ways that we can do this. It's important to surround our days in prayer. So Anna gave thanks for Jesus. I wonder this morning what we are thankful to God for. It's good practice, isn't it, to often thank God for all that he provides. It reminds us of his faithful presence. And then Anna Hearing this good news starts to whisper it around. She shares it with anyone who will listen. I wonder how we can be faithful witnesses to the good news of Jesus. So, let us adopt the faith of Ania and Simeon to wait upon God, to listen to him, to spend time worshipping him and to seek to walk closely with him. Let us be a people who watch out for God in the ordinary, to learn to be expectant of those acts of God in all places and encounters so that we don't miss it. We don't miss the work of the Spirit. And let us be people who are willing to join in with what God is do, doing. Let us remember that even in the darkest of dark places, Jesus is there shining his light. And finally, let us remember that we are special treasures to God. And let us be willing to spread that good news of his love with us all. With all. Let me pray. Father God, thank you so much for the gift of Jesus. Help us to be people who are waiting and watching expectant for you to be at work in ordinary places. Forgive us when we've become jaded, when we've just be allowed our encounters with you to be just routine. Help us to look out for you and to share your love with others. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord of hosts, we praise your holy name. Lord, your faithful servants Simeon and Anna watched in hope for the fulfilment of your promise. Give the church the same patience and trust. As your family, we gather here in your presence to offer our prayers for the needs of others and for the world in this difficult time for all. Help us to focus our thoughts, our concerns, our hopes and our fears. Touch us with your presence that we may feel your nearness. We pray for our whole team at Rotherham Minster and St Paul's Masborough. We pray for our bishops and archbishops, leading all Christians to follow you. For Elizabeth, our Queen, as head of the Church of England, and we ask that all religious leaders work with each other to find common ground where all faiths may live and work in harmony. Give voice to your people to praise and speak of your redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, Simeon described your church as a sign that will be opposed. Open the hearts of the powerful and those who are led to your justice. 
Give them the wisdom to make the best decisions for all people, sharing all the world's resources. Give courage to those who stand up and defend what is right. Although we all worry about COVID-19 across the world, don't let it overshadow all the other world issues that have not gone away. Stop the exploitation of all those who are marginalised and drive away the fear that oppresses and demeans. Give hope that we will one day be free to live in unity and good health. Restore us in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you see our inner thoughts and we can keep no secrets from you. Cleanse and revive our spirits for your praise and glory. We give thanks for our homes, neighbours and our loved ones. Make us mindful that we depend on others and as we pray, preserve us in truth and godly living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we stand before you utterly dependent on your grace for all that sustains our living. Teach us to praise you in sickness and in health. We pray for all those suffering with both physical and mental health issues and ask you to give them the strength to face the challenges ahead. We also pray for the caregivers working hard to look after all in need. Give them the strength to carry on. Bring reassurance that, though mortal, we are precious in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you give leave to your faithful ones to depart in peace. Hear us as we remember all those who have died. May the light of your countenance give hope and peace. May the souls of the departed rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We take a few moments of silence to bring our own prayers quietly before you. And in communion with St Paul, and all the saints we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join together in praying the diocesan prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit, we may, as the Diocese of Sheffield, both flourish and grow, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hear the words of our Saviour Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. Let us therefore bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, 
and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I invite you to light a candle where you are gathered. As we come to the time of praying together our candle mass prayer, and asking for God to fill us afresh with his light. Lord God, the springing source of everlasting light, pour into the hearts of your faithful people the brilliance of your eternal splendour that we who by these kindling flames light up this temple to your glory may have the darkness of our souls dispelled and so be counted worthy to stand before you in that eternal city where you live and reign, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high has broken upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. I invite you to offer a sign of peace to those that you are gathered with this morning.
So as our service starts to draw to a close, just a few things to share with you. A reminder that there are a variety of ways for us to pray together during the week, and the full details of that will be shown on the screen at the end. We're in the process of planning a Lent course, which will be on Zoom. If you'd like to be a part of this, please respond following the directions on the newsletter, so we can best organise it. In the meantime, our small groups are still running, and if you'd like to explore joining one of them, again, please get in touch. Next Sunday, we're trying our first all-age service, which again will be on YouTube in the same way. Look out, though, for further details in next week's newsletter, as you may need to prepare some things in advance. The Archbishops have encouraged us to put a candle in our windows tomorrow evening, as we remember all those that have died from coronavirus. Perhaps you could even use today's candle for that purpose. And lastly, we are not quite able to give her the send-off we would have liked to, but we're so grateful that Louise has been able to spend these last few months with us. I'm sure you would agree with me that she has been an incredible blessing to our worshipping community. We now wish her all God's blessing for the next stage of her ministry and look forward to our relationship continuing, albeit in a different way. Thank you, Louise, and God bless you. Father, we have sung your praise with shepherds and angels. May Christ be born in our hearts today. Praise to Christ our light. We have shared in the joy of Simeon and Anna. Help us, like them, to trust your word. Praise to Christ our light. We have greeted Jesus, the light of the world. May we be filled with the light of your love. Praise to Christ our light. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, fill you with radiance and scatter the darkness from your path. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, gladden your eyes and warm your heart. Amen. Christ, the dayspring from on high, draw near to guide your feet into the way of peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.